and I believe we are live if the um, streaming gods are <laughs> <laughs> smiling, smiling upon, upon us. us. <laughs> Hope everyone is having a wonderful Friday, kicking off Memorial Day weekend here in the States, and we are going to do a um, kind of patriotic painting. We're going to do red, white, and blue geraniums with some forget-me-nots in a galvanized bucket with an American flag. And I hope you guys all paint along and have a good time with us. I have a pattern of this on my website. The link is in the video description if you want to print it off and um, and transfer it onto your watercolor paper. We're going to be using, um, you can use whatever brand watercolors you have. I'm using a combination of Lucas, uh, Turner, and Windsor Newton. And this video is brought to you by jerrysartorama.com. You can find all the supplies we're using today. The links are in the video description over at Jerry's and find them for the best possible price. I'm here with Sarah. Hi. And we are ready to paint with you and answer any questions you have as we go along. So don't forget to type it in the chat in caps if you have a question for me and Sarah can ask me. So first thing I did here was I transferred my drawing onto my paper. And you can see here where you've got some kind of like blue color this is masking fluid if you don't have masking fluid um, when you put your pattern on just don't transfer the stars or these little white areas around the forget-me-nots instead just use like a clear uh, piece of wax or a white crayon and you can mask off the areas that way so Ooh, white uh, crayon I never would have thought of that That's yeah a good idea. yeah it works great it works great we're gonna begin by wetting the bucket here I'm just using clear water, and the paper I'm using is uh, Fabriano. It's actually I was I had to dig through and find a piece with a watermark on it because I wasn't sure if I was using watercolor paper or printmaking paper because it was acting um, kind of funny. Um, but this is the Fabriano art. It's now called Artistico. It used to be called Uno, and it is not a very heavily sized paper, so it's very absorbent. My paint's not gonna um, flow as much on this paper as others. I'm not sure if the sizing is kind of gone. But the Fabriano paper has a natural a vegetable sizing rather than a gelatin sizing, so it is a little bit different. Um, we're going to take a little yellow ochre, and I'm just going to drop some of that in there. It will flow a bit, but it's just not going to run as much as, as some of our other papers will. And then I'm going to grab some Payne's Gray, and the Payne's Gray I'm using is actually from the Lucas line of paints. That came in my little... Um, my little field kit that I just got from Jerry's and uh, it's not a color I typically use but I do like it once in a while it's more of like a um, indigo than a than a, like a true gray so I think that's why I kind of like it and I'm just letting the colors run together and I made an, a mistake in my first picture I let this part get too dark I really want to build up some texture of galvanization on this so I'm just kind of keeping it light and just letting the colors flow together so who do we have in the house with us today, Sarah? Uh, Sierra Anna Griffith, uh, Valerie Connell, Gracie Shackwan, Ian Jackson, uh, some of the usuals. Uh, it's a little quiet right now today, but it is the start of a long weekend. And, you know, if it's nice where you are here in these United States, you're probably, a lot of people are probably getting ready to barbecue or go to camp or go mm -hmm. camping etc etc power washing the porch and the <laughs> getting the pool ready <laughs> for <the> tomorrow <laughs> i just want to tip my paper a little bit so you could see that there's some shine on that i wanted you to be able to see how the paint was flowing there's something else i want to do here to keep it kind of loose is i'm going to flick some water in the um, flower areas it's not going to be as dramatic as it would be um, if i had used a different paper like an arches but i do want to have a little bit of color going outside of my lines I'm going to go ahead and grab some crimson red. You can use alizarin crimson or crimson lake. This is crimson lake from a, um, a tube of Windsor Newton watercolor that I had that's probably about 100 years old. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even recognize the labels. They haven't looked like that in a long Ooh, time. It's vintage. Vintage Windsor Newton. And I'm just tapping on some, uh, some nice, rich, true red in the... Um, in the flower areas and just kind of letting it do its do its thing. I want to leave a little bit of white here and there, so I'm trying not to cover everything. I want to have a little sparkle and I like how it's wanting to um, kind of flood out a little bit there. And you may hear children in the background because I have the door open so I can kind of keep an ear on them. I mean, they're all <laughs> competent and old enough, but I've also sent them to clean their room, so um, World War Three might be breaking out at any moment. <laughs> I'm going to grab a little sap green 
and this is from the Turner line of paints. I'm really, the more and more I paint with the Turner ones, the more I get impressed with them. I do like them more than the Lucas. I find the Lucas to be a little bit more opaque, and I prefer a transparent watercolor. Uh, Gracie Shack One wants to know what the weather here in Maine is today. Well, it's cool, overcast, and rainy. I don't think it's supposed to stay rainy, though. I think we're supposed no. to, it's supposed to get uh, sunny, and tomorrow it's supposed to be 90. And that's what they're saying, which is fine, because, like I said, the pool will be ready, so. I might wear, I might wear my bathing suit. That's mine. Fair warning to anybody that's going to show up at that, that party tomorrow. <laughs> hey, I'll be putting mine on, too. It's about going to be mostly family anyway, so it doesn't matter. That's all right. Um, let's see. Gracie Shack one, I need advice about my painting backgrounds. I find it difficult. They don't seem to work outright. Any ideas to improve backgrounds? You know what? There's a there's an artist. Her name is Jean Haynes. She's a beautiful watercolorist. And she starts her practice every day. And she's been painting for years and years and years. And just one of my favorite watercolorists. She starts off her day making backgrounds. And she'll take two. I think she, hmm. she wrote about it on her blog. She talked about... Um, starting by taking two colors from her palette. She starts on a Monday, takes two colors from her palette and does background with it. And then she removes those two colors from her palette so she's not allowed to use those for the rest of the week. And she does that until she's gone through. By the end of the week, she's got very little paint left to pick from and that's what she paints from hmm. um, in the day. So, I mean, even as, as an experienced painter, you still you need to practice. So I would say just... Try some wet into wet backgrounds. Try some gradient washes. Try some solid washes. Um, I know Gracie's in my class over at Craftsy, and the first lesson is on backgrounds. So practice those backgrounds that um, that I've taught you. And it's, it's practice. It's practice. You'll get more comfortable. You'll get more free with your backgrounds. I'm going to add a little yellow ochre into those uh, green areas. Uh, Jen K says the red is called Lyrical 66. Lyrical 66? Uh, maybe uh, maybe she mistyped something. That 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 red is Lyrical 66. Lyrical 66. I don't know. The, the tube says Crimson Lake from Windsor and Newton. Mm. If, um, but it it is a very old tube, so maybe they've changed the name. Maybe. Uh, Crazy Evil Turtle. Uh, is the purpose of the drips to push pigment out from where you laid it on just now? Yeah, just to get some looseness and some spontaneity. Um, cause we'll go back in and tighten things up later, but it just gives it a, a nice, um, a nice loose look. I mean, you, and you can go flick on water at any point and help it move around, but I just kind of like to have it kind of disrupted a little bit right at the beginning. I'm going to switch over now. That was a number 12 mimic. It's a pretty big brush. I mean, there's 16s that are about that same size. So it's a pretty decent sized brush. I'm going to grab a smaller brush. And so this is a number eight, I believe. Yeah, eight round uh, mimic, which is a faux Kalinske. And I'm going to go back, go into my sap green, not quite as juicy. And I'm going to paint the little buds here. I'm going to leave little spaces so that I can throw some red in, like they're just about to bloom. Feel free to turn your paper so it's comfortable. I'm trying to keep it fairly uh, straight for you guys, though. Uh, Nadia draws. Any tips for the wet on wet technique? Um, make sure your paper is glossy. If you're doing a, a wet into wet background, I would make sure, and you're trying to do the whole background, I would wet the paper and hold it to the light, make sure it all looks glossy. So you know your paper's really wet enough. This paper, I'm wondering if maybe the sizing has gone out. Because I've used Art, uh, Fabriano Artistico a lot. And this is really very absorbent. So I'm wondering if my sizing has kind of gone bad in this. Which doesn't really happen. I've never found it happen with arches, which is a gelatin sizing. But I know a lot of people. I mean, I'm a vegetarian, but I still will use watercolor paper with a gelatin size. Um, I don't use uh, Kalinsky sable brushes, true sable brushes. Because they're a byproduct of the fur industry. Um, but I will use hog brushes because, you know, they're a byproduct of the meat industry. And while I'm not that keen on the meat industry, my family eats meat and I feel like, you know, use the whole animal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Syriana Griffith has, some um, a question, but it's, she had to, she cut it into three parts. It's going to take me a minute to read it all. Okay. 
me and my partner decided to paint our project, which was a robot. So as being on a budget, we got only four colors, red, yellow, blue, and white. I gotta scroll down to find mm -hmm. her again. Da, 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 da. So my partner started mixing the colors in a circular motion and me being the art expert told her that folding the colors will give better results. Oh. So my partner started mixing the colors. Is it true or did, get, or did I give horrible advice to my partner? Um, okay, it sounds like she's using a paint like an acrylic, something thick and viscous. Um, and if you're using a palette knife, you can just, yeah, scoop it up and smoosh it down, scoop it and smoosh it. That works really well. If you mix with a brush, you waste a lot of paint because a lot of it gets in the bristles and you have to rinse it out. Um, so I would say mix with a palette knife and folding motion's great. I don't think there's a wrong way to do it, but um, that'll probably be a little more efficient. But it's not going to hurt it either way. You decide to mix it. I hope that answers your question. If I misunderstood, then just let us know. I'm going to grab some more of that. Um, actually, before I do it, let's put some shadow onto our, onto our flag before we do anything else. Let's take a little Payne's Gray so we don't just have a big white flag. You need to want to tone it a little bit. I'm going to do, I'm going to wet the edge here of the folded part of the flag. So I have, um, so I can get a blend. I'm going to add some gray into it. That'll give me, um, so that when I go and paint my red over it, there'll be a little bit of a shadow. And there'll be a little bit of shadow on the white stripes too. And a tip when you're painting a flag and and it doesn't this will sound really funny. Sometimes we see something so much that we forget what it actually looks like. And the American flag can be one of those things because it's just it's an icon, we see it all the time. Um, you always start and end with a red stripe. So if you get confused when you're going to paint a flag, start and end with a red stripe. The red stripes are on the outside. That way you'll get the right um, the right situation. And when you're doing the stars, because um, we're not and we don't have room to paint real stars in there, so we have to kind of do dots. You they go they're kind of funny. They go in rows of five and four, so you'd have five stars, four stars, five stars, four stars, and they're kind of um, uh, offset so that you can fit them all in there. Because it seems very impossible to fit forty dots in that little blue area. So that might just be a little helpful hint when you go to um, when you go to paint a flag. Uh, Elizabeth Machi, how do you decide whether to paint background or subject first? This one, because I'm doing a loose technique where I might just spray areas of the paper and let it flood out, I am not painting the background, but I usually do the background first if I know I'm going to have a background in it. I'm going in with some ultramarine blue, and again we're using the Turner, and I'm going to paint these little uh, forget-me-nots here, and I have masked out the, uh, well I don't think I did it on that one for whatever reason, but I have masked out the little lighter areas in here. Not a big deal. If you forgot, um, you can always go in with a colored pencil later and and, uh, and adjust it. And whenever you're dealing with a paper that's not wanting to lift or blend, like this, uh, this paper here, now even if the sizing went off on it and it's not working as well for watercolor, I still wouldn't toss it because it's still high quality paper. So paint on it, you just might need to adapt a little bit to make it um, fit your needs a little bit. So that's why I decided to keep working with this even though it might have been easier on like an arches or something else. I figured, well, I'm not gonna waste this. Let's, let's learn a little bit about using paper that maybe isn't perfect. So maybe you've got some less expensive paper and it's, it's just not performing the way you want. By learning a few, ch a few you know, tips and tricks to use a paper that's more absorbent or less flowy or has less sizing in it. You can, you know, make use of what you have and then, you know, make a smarter purchase next time. So on the sizing, crazy, okay. crazy evil turtle, can you fix the sizing? I heard you could put, you could paint gelatin onto your paper as a sizing. I think you can. I've never done that. Um, I think I'd probably be more inclined just to use this for like mixed media or add more stuff on top of it, maybe acrylics or um, colored pencil or pastel or something. You probably can. You could also add some um, gum arabic into your paints so that they become glossier so that it'll act more like you've used a, 
uh, heavier sized paper. So there's different things you can do there. I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool just for a second. Oh, the children just came and shut the door to the office. Should I be uh -oh. concerned? No, no. They're probably <laughs> gonna do something noisy, so they're trying to be respectful. Oh, okay. Yeah, that must be it. I'm sure they're gonna go practice their band instruments now yeah, well, that they're home for the summer. Uh, Nadia draws. How long have you been painting for? I started watercolor painting when I was seven. Uh, Amanda K. Crafts plans. Do higher end brushes? Do higher end brushes shed hairs like cheaper ones? No, but you can actually get decent quality brushes that aren't very expensive. So, um, and sometimes you will get. I mean, I you also wash your brush first before you use it with some like dish soap or shampoo or something just to get. I'd probably do dish soap so you don't have weird conditioners in there. Um, and then after that, it shouldn't. They should not shed brush shed uh, bristles but I mean you don't have to spend a ton of money to get a good brush these days it's not like it used to be so you know like these are not that expensive um, these are the Mimic Kalinskis the Royal Aqualons and Royal Majestics are not very expensive and they're fantastic I really recommend them for beginners because they're easier to control because like with here you're gonna get a lot of paint and water on your brush and I like that but if you're a beginner you might find that a little intimidating so, you know, just get a good, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg, just get a decent, a decent brush. Simply Simmons, I don't think those shed, and they're available for watercolor or um, acrylics. Maybe even oil too, I'm not sure. But um, I don't have any Simply Simmons oil brushes. They're not my favorite watercolor brushes. They're not that, then I, I want my brush a little more absorbent than that. But they're not going to shed anyway. Now you can kind of see, well, I don't know if you can see on screen or not, but we've kind of got a glazing effect here where we've put the the transparent crimson over our flag and so we've got this natural shadow where we put the panes gray before so that just that just saved some work for us down the road it is a little blurry not bad at least on my end yeah jason was saying that uh that i probably should get this he's like you're live streaming with that camera that 50 dollars camera i'm like oh it was only 50 dollars because he bought it i don't know oh. <laughs> So apparently, maybe I need a better uh, a better camera. But it's always been the internet connection that was the uh, right. The well, now you've link. upgraded that, so it makes sense you'd have to upgrade your camera. Yeah, take advantage of it. So we shall see. I don't know what to get though. I'll have to do a little research. Uh, Jen K, have you ever used clayboard? If so, which medium? I have. I use the watercolor. Um, it was all right. It's I prefer paper to watercolor on, but. Um, but I have used it. Then I, you can even, I wonder if that one, yeah, you can scratch back and then even add more. Uh, so like if you leave out a highlight and you want to get back to the white, you can scratch it, which is kind of cool. Made by Ampersand Art Products, I believe. Yeah, I used it once. It wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't really go with my style. So it was fun, but I didn't buy any more because it's just not, not how I prefer to paint. But it might be how you prefer to paint, so try it. Uh, Leah Hovec, hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, when I try to watercolor, the color goes through the paper. What can I do? And the colors don't blend and pour into each other. That's because your paper. It's, it's the same situation where I was talking about the sizing. That's kind of what was happening here. If I show you my. Um... This painting here that I did earlier, the same paper, you can see where some of the color has bled through. That should not happen with a watercolor paper. So I know my sizing's gone off um, on that paper. So basically you wanna work in an ad, it, it's your paper. When you, when you get different paper, you're not gonna have that problem. But to use the paper you have, because nobody likes to waste, um, do techniques where you don't need to remove paint, where you don't need to lift back to the, um, to the paper and probably do techniques where you don't really need to rely on wet into wet blending because you're gonna it's it's just not gonna work very well on that paper you can add a little bit of um, gum arabic to your paint like I mentioned before that will help it be a little slicker and maybe even a little bit of glycerin into your water that will help reduce the surface tension and make your paint flow a little bit better but um, you're probably gonna struggle with that until you get a different paper. Um, an inexpensive version would be like the um, Canson, Montville, or Strathmore 400 series. Those are decent papers that uh, are well sized. Working on, on 
lower quality paper is is probably I think paper's probably the the first place to splurge because your painting enjoyment will be so much better if you have good paper. Uh, Gracie Shack one, what inspired you to make your own art craft tutorials? Um, I had an art studio where I taught uh, for quite a while. I really enjoyed it, and then when I was um, home with raising my kids, and they were before they were um, they were kind of getting ready to be school age, and I wanted to. I wanted to teach again, but still my schedule with the kids wasn't one where I could just kind of go back into teaching full time. I just thought, well, this would be a great way to teach and um, and I can do it from home. So that's kind of what inspired me. I did it for the fame and fortune of being a <laughs> YouTuber. <laughs> You know, you did. You do get recognized down at the heirloom show. That's true. Uh, more or less, Ruth. I'm Ruth from Spain. Uh, her nephew just recently passed away at 22, oh. and she wants to give her sister something special. What type of card or reminder could I do? Um, you could do a like a little hand painted watercolor sympathy card. Mm -hmm. A shadow box, yep, maybe. A shadow box, Those are yeah. always nice. Yeah, that's a tough one because you don't want to bring up any sad memories, but you want to let them know that you're thinking of them. Yeah. That's a tough one. But I like the shadow box idea. That's really nice. Um, I'm picking up a little yellow ochre and a little watered down Payne's gray. On you can use a flat brush, an angle brush. This one's a half inch. You could go a little smaller than this, honestly. Um, and I want to get that galvanized texture, so I'm just turning my brush and tapping on the little planter here. I'm trying not to let it get too dark, and it will dry a little bit lighter. But I just want to get that little galvanized texture. So I'm working on the dry bucket. I think I will maybe grab a smaller flat for that because I feel like that's giving me too much of a larger. And we will do a little more shading on this. Let's just get this um, texture down for the time being. Uh, Gracie Shack one, what pencil would you recommend a beginner at art? Not sure what I should get. The Prismacolor pencils tend to break. I do like those pencils. Mm, I do too. They're you got the beautiful creamy lead, but the side effect is that it breaks a lot. I think the Color Soft by Derwent are very, um, they're very soft and creamy, and you don't have to deal with the breakage. They seem to be much stronger. I think they have some sort of grit in them. Something, something keeps them together a lot, a lot better. I don't know what it is exactly. Okay, we're going to move along to the geranium flowers, and I'm going in with a number eight brush, and I'm going to mix a nice dark using my crimson and a little bit of ultramarine blue just a touch just to darken it we don't want a real real deep purple but we do want um almost like a wine color i'm actually looking at the flower my sister got me this flower for mother's day i love geraniums i do too they can be kind of challenging to paint because there's so many little petals on there. Mm. So I found just kind of treat it as one big mass instead of all those little petals and you end up uh, having a much nicer time of it. And then it doesn't look all fussy, which is which is good. She got me that orchid that's in the living room that bloomed for like five months this year. It was crazy. Yeah, your orchids are crazy. My orchid does nothing but just sit there. Uh, Sierra Griffith, is it better to mix colors by folding them or is it better to mix them with circular motions and why? Well, I think I just answered that question. Um, I think if you're doing watercolors, you kind of have to mix them with a brush and with, you know, swishing them around circular motions. With uh, acrylics, I'd fold them with a palette knife so that you're not wasting um, a bunch of paint by getting it stuck in the bristles. I'm going to um, take some 
just the plain red and just kind of dab on some bolder blobs of color and I'll let some of the shadows just flow. Now there won't be a live show next week so I'll be in um, Massachusetts just to let you guys know. Yay for the heirloom stamp show. For the show. heirloom stamp show. I'm looking forward to that. I'm not packed yet. I've got almost got my workshop stuff packed. That's uh, all spread around my pool table downstairs. Adding a little bit of red in some of these um, little geranium buds that haven't popped yet. Uh, the image just went kind of blurry. Oh, okay. We back? back yep, it just kind of out of focus for a minute. Oh, that's weird. It probably was a uh, might have been bandwidth issues. Yeah. Because I have the focus set, so it shouldn't change. Um, so I'm going to make some shadows in for the geraniums, and I'm going to use sap green and ultramarine blue. It's going to give us a nice, it's going to give us a nice bright, um, bright dark, like not a dead dark, but we will do some other darks where we take the crimson and add it to the green too, because those are opposites, That'll, but that gives us more of a neutral or a dead dark. So we want to keep it bright to begin with. Uh, 1991 Shuby, have you ever experimented with changing your style? How does one find their individual look and style? Um, I think, yeah, because I mean, I'm always like kind of trying to push things, either try some, to do something way more realistic or try to do something way looser than, I'm, than I typically do. Um, I think people can change your styles. A lot of people say you need to stay in the same style. And I guess if you're trying to make a living selling your art, then you want to stay in the same style. But, um, I mean, you look at Picasso. He went through so many different styles in his career. And he was such a prolific artist. I think he would have got bored if he had to stay with one style. I think just experiment. Sometimes just trying a different color palette than you typically use. Like, maybe you never use, maybe there's four or five colors you never use. Try using those colors. That will help, you know, that will, that's a great way to change the look of your art if you feel like you want to do something different, trying a different medium, um, trying to copy a master that you admire, copy their painting, and then, you know, that will help you break into a different style too, or even try a different subject matter. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think you need to in order to grow. Uh, Cindy Matthews, I have a question for mm -hmm. both Sarah and Lindsay. When you talk of going to the beach, are you going to a lake or the ocean? I love your part of Maine. I'm both. I yeah. usually go to a lake because there's lakes closer and it's warmer. Because yeah. pretty close, the ocean up here is cold. <laughs> yeah, it is very cold, and there, are, you know, a lot of the good beaches around here are usually really busy with tourists. Mm -hmm. So you know, which is not a bad thing, but some days you just want to go relax, you know, because. When you're from around here, you know kind of like the more local lakes and ponds and stuff that you can go to that are just as nice and just as relaxing. Yeah. And if you're lucky, you have a friend or family with a camp on a lake somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, this is feeling way too tight for me, so I am flicking on some water, and I'm going to hope that I can encourage some of the paint to go on a vacation of its own, go on a little adventure off into the white space that's kind of bringing me down here. Uh, Ian Jackson, should you have a style? I think you'll naturally um, develop one, and I don't think I don't think you need to you know worry about it and go looking for it. I mean, like my style, my style is quite loose, but it wasn't always that way. I, I have to work at it. Um, because abstraction doesn't come natural to me, but I like abstraction. And so I do things like flicking water and flicking paint on my painting and, you know, forcing it to be a little bit more abstract because that's what I like. And I just, I think, have a natural tendency to make things tight. So I kind of fight that natural tendency because the look I want is something a little bit looser. Uh, older and Dirt asked me if I'm going to do a filler video with you being gone. I will not be doing any filler video. I'm nowhere near as talented. 
I'll probably have something. I mean, I'll have stuff scheduled, and I might do. Um, I mean, because I'm traveling with Lorraine and Kathy, so maybe they'll want to do an Ask a Crafter or oh, something ooh, live. Oh, that's a good idea because you'll be at the hotel room later. You'll have time to sit and relax and have a cocktail and do Ask. Yeah, I could do Ask, ask a, a Crafter. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. What I do you guys think? What do you guys think about YouTube, YouTube Land? Um, I have a feeling um, they will be with it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I won't be prepared, though, so people have to, they'll have to submit questions or just listen to us talk about whatever we talk about. <laughs> Which, I mean, you could do a review of the show, you could talk about your class, what you taught, yeah. all sorts of stuff. Oh, that's true. I mean, you know, some up-and-coming products that you've seen, or, you know, you could do a stash haul, too, one day. Oh, that's true. I could do a haul. We could do like, a haul from all, th a live, all three of us. A live haul a live video haul. the day that would be cool. instead of having to wait till you come back. I think that's, that's a, a good idea. idea. Also, so that I can watch them later. Vicariously. <laughs> you guys bought. What <laughs> <laughs> oh. stays, what happens at the stamp show stays at the stamp show. That's right. Uh, Kelly Tanner, have either of you guys made your own watercolors? I've seen it done, but I don't know how good they would be. Well, depends on what you put in them. The cornstarch food coloring watercolors that are all the rage, I can't imagine, would... would... That seems kind of weird. Yeah, I, I think they're they're great for kids, but I don't think they would last. I don't think they'd be very vibrant. I think they'd be very chalky. Um, now, I'm very happy with the modern advances of being able to buy paints. <laughs> just buy your own paints, get a good coupon... Um, you don't have to put this color in the background if you don't want to. I just felt like I needed something in here. Um, oh, and I was going to use burnt sienna in the uh, in the painting, but I guess I don't really need it. So you guys can scratch that off the list. Uh, Payne's gray was plenty uh, gray enough. I didn't need to warm it up. The yellow ochre seemed to do enough to that. Uh, JPC 13 Art, any tips for getting smooth skin tone with watercolor? Um, the, probably the biggest thing is going to be making sure that you have a paper that's smooth, like a, a hot pressed paper and make sure you wet the entire face when you and put in your colors and get as much done in that, um, in that layer as you can. And then I would use a brush that is like this. When you're doing shading, I would use a flat like this and I would put the color on the edge of the pointy bristle there. And then I would do like side loading for your shading so you get a nice blend because that, that is challenging to try to get um, to get soft skin skin tones. Uh, Becca Bullard, are dollar rowney brushes good? I haven't used dollar rowney brushes, so I am not sure on that one. And simply says, what kind of brushes do I need to have as a watercolor newbie? I would go with um, some synthetic brushes. Ebony Splendor um, is good. Royal Aqualon, Royal Majestic. This is an Aqualon. I like it because it's got a clear handle with a scraper end so you can scrape, um, you know, with um, with your brush and get some cool textures if you're doing landscapes and stuff. I'm going in. I'm going to show you that side loading technique that I just referred to when I was talking about portraits a minute ago. And I'm going to use it to do some shadowing under the lip of the galvanized pail here. So what I'm going to do is clean my brush off. And I am going to blot it. And then I'm going to dip this corner into my Payne's Gray puddle of paint I have on my palette. I slide it over a little bit so you can see. And then I am going to use that side. And the, the angle helps because you can tell what side you put the paint on because sometimes you can't tell when you're doing watercolors. And I just pull it across like that. I need more, so I'm going to reload. You'll have to rinse it if your paint goes all the way across your brush, but if it hasn't, then sometimes you can just reload. I need to get some more paint on my palette because I don't have quite enough. So if I dip my brush in my palette, in my paint, then I have to rinse it off. I really want a good shadow under this leaf. So you get a nice blended shadow when you do that, which is uh, really helpful. Nice shadows under those big leaves there. Uh, Rochelle Don Paul, 
Hi Lindsay, I'm originally from Sri Lanka and so I would love to create something similar based on my country. I love to paint and I'm fairly good at it, but I can't draw too well. Any tips? Uh, practice. Start by tracing. Tracing is actually a wonderful tool. Tracing, tracing, tracing. Yep, it's a great tool to get you used to drawing and to actually have you see what's actually there instead of um, a lot of times you'll draw something, but what you're doing is really just what your brain thinks is there and not what's really there. So when you trace, you actually draw what's actually there. Let me see. Oh, that's pretty dry. I feel like I want to brighten up the flowers here. So I'm going to go with that, um, with that red all on its own and a big juicy brush and just kind of tap in some brighter areas. Uh, people are excited about live ask the crafter. Oh, good. Uh, Jacqueline Stevens still votes for the car video for the car ride down. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Guess I'm going to get Lorraine to, oh, I don't think I want Lorraine to drive. Get Kathy to drive. <laughs> uh, yep. We have ask the crafter. People are all about that. They think that's great. We have multiple votes for that. Uh, Gracie Shack is for the live haul. Okay. Oops. Uh, Ian Jackson, that. how about a live at the convention walkthrough? I don't know would if have, their internet will support that. Would you have to get permission to from? Um, yes. Any time I go into a booth, I have to get permission from a vendor. I usually do that ahead of time, um, especially if I want an interview. And sometimes people will give you permission, and then whoever's in the booth right. demoing well, will have a fit. So it's kind of a pain in the butt, actually. <laughs> but I do intend to do some Instagram photos. So follow me on Instagram, Lindsay Wyrick on Instagram, if you want to get some kind of behind-the-scenes shots from the show. And follow me on my blog, too, because I will post. I can easily upload a bunch of photos onto my blog from my phone. Mm -hmm. I haven't decided whether I'm going to bring my camera or just bring my phone. Probably that's all you need is your phone. Yeah, I don't know about... I, I don't think you can live broadcast on YouTube without a computer, though, so I might I might bring my computer. I'm not sure. I haven't decided. Mm -hmm. I like to, I like to, I'm a really light packer, light traveler. Yeah. And I have to carry all that stuff, bring all that stuff for the well, class. Well, you got to leave so. all that space for the hall. I know. I need, and I, yeah, I need room to bring all the good stuff back. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to make a really dark green by using sap green and some crimson. You can add a little uh, ultramarine blue to that, too, if you want to have super, super dark. And that's going to go in, I'm kind of painting the negative areas around, um, around the leaves. Still keeping it very abstract though. It's just an impression of a geranium. Uh, Yumi Tab, Lindsay, you said you like transparent watercolors, but also that you like cadmium yellow, red, which are typically opaque pigments. Is there any advantage to use these, or do you just like the colors? Um, so, yes, cadmium red and cadmium yellow are, if you take them out of the palette full strength, will be very opaque. However, they are such strong colors that you can add them, you can add so much water to them, and they still retain that vibrancy that by the time you're done adding the water to them, they become transparent because they're such strong pigments. So you can get those fairly heavy opaque colors, but add water to them, make them transparent, and they're still that strong. That's why I like those colors. Because there's other colors where you have to keep adding so much pigment that <clears throat> that it's really wasteful and you don't seem to get your money's worth. So with cadmiums, I mean, you can thin them down with water. They're still so very strong that by the time you're done thinning them, they're transparent. Uh, Knob Knobs Whimsical Enthusiast 123. Lindsay, will you be watching the Alice Through the Looking Glass movie? Oh, I'm sure I probably will. I, I like Alice in Wonderland stuff, and um, the kids like the other, the mm. the one that came before that. Uh, Sue Langwell, have you made any videos with Spectrum Noir markers? Yes, I have. I couldn't tell you right off the bat because I kind of, in my brain, lump, lump them all together with every other alcohol marker. I really don't, I really don't see a huge advantage over one from the other. So they would be with my in my alcohol marker playlist. All right, I feel like I want a little more shadow on the bucket. And again, if you don't like the splatters, you don't have to do the splatters. I happen to like them. 
and actually could probably remove our masking fluid off the flag at this point. Maybe I'll let it dry a minute because I can't remove them from the flowers quite yet. Uh, Ian Jackson, would you paint this with Yupo paper? <clears throat> you could. Um, you can't go back and rework stuff. You kind of have to leave it as it is. Yupo is its own beast and it's not going to react the same way. Here I've got way too much paint on my brush to do side loading, so what I'm going to do if you end up with this situation, get your paint down, quickly rinse your brush off, squeeze off the extra water and just go along the edge with a clean brush and you can blend it out. A shot on the inside of the handle there, I think. Uh, stars, Starshine Soldier. I know you used eyeshadow to make metallic watercolor. Would normal eyeshadow work too for do your for do it yourself watercolors? Uh, with the eyeshadow, I, re I really wouldn't because there's so much talc in that that um, it wouldn't be vibrant. I think you would be disappointed. All right, I am going to remove the stars from the flag using my rubber cement pickup here. Uh, Randy Command, my leaves are looking a bit muddy. Can this be fixed? Um, yes, we're going to go in with some darker shadows. You can. Um, we're using yellow ochre, but if you wanted to switch it up to like a lemon yellow, that will brighten up your leaves. You know, everybody's every line of yellow, every line of paint, the colors might be s slightly different. So if your yellow yellow ochre was a bit um, muddier, your leaves might be a little muddier. So go ahead, and you could add some lemon yellow or cad yellow light to brighten them up, more sap green. And when we put the shadows in, we put some shadows in, we'll go and define a little bit more and that will help brighten things up. And we're also gonna brighten up the, um, the flowers up here by adding that same dark that we used that, actually, you know what, let's try. I think we'll get a better, a more crisper dark if we use Payne's Gray and the, um, and the crimson. Let's try that and put in a few individual petals, just kind of outline a few petals here. Oh, I like that better. You could use ultramarine blue if you don't have Payne's gray, but since we've been using it already, it's perfectly fine to use here. Uh, Candace Tobacco, is the Stamp Expo you're going to next week just for vendors, or is it open to the public too? It's open to the public. And it's Saturday, it, Sunday. Yep, the, the Expo is, uh, it's the Heirloom Productions stamp show it is um open to saturday and sunday for people to come and shop there are classes on friday i still have a few spots in my second class it's a mixed media class if anybody wants to come and um there are other come other vendors that have classes there it is um the classes range in price from i think 25 to 35 dollars and the um the admission for the weekend is eight dollars for both days and it gets you in both days and you really do need two days at least when the lot when i went yeah i would recommend days. i would recommend if you could if you can spare the time to come for two days i remember the first time i went i only went for one day and it was so stressful to like see everything and choose what i wanted because you kind of want to see everything and then go back and pick because you know you can't buy everything you, you want no and um and he didn't want to make a bad choice and buy something then wish I bought something else. So I was really st kind of stressed out that first year I went. So, um, and then I think there was another year I went just for one day, I think. Or you had to leave early on Sunday. You had yeah. a half a day on Sunday. Because yeah. the, the people you had ridden down with were leaving. Right. And I think I went down twice riding with them and they came back before the second yep. day. Um, but I think... Maybe I just did it once. I'm pretty, I, I was thinking I did it twice where I rode with, with Tracy and Cindy. But, um, but yeah, we're going down for both days and uh, probably be there all day the second day unless we've seen everything or we're broke. Whichever comes first. <laughs> Whichever comes first. <laughs> you know, I kind of want to do, I don't know if I'll have my act together, but I think it'd be so fun to do a Yankee swap because so many people don't know what Yankee swaps are. Oh, Yeah. And I think it would be so fun to like go through my stash because I get a lot of stuff from companies that I don't end up using because it's just not my style or whatever. 
I think it would be fun to like wrap a bunch of those up and then give everybody one thing, but then go around like a Yankee Swap. Oh yeah, that would be a good idea. That'd be a good way to get rid of some of your stash too. Where some people would actually use it. Yeah. And then it's always fun to see people try to bargain and get you know. Oh yeah. Well, I'll trade. Yeah. Oh, I'll yeah. trade you for this. You know. Don't the you want infamous this? chip clip of Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas Eve, two thousand, whatever year it was. I think he might, Andrew still has that chip clip. Oh my gosh, probably that chip yeah. clip. <laughs> it's so funny what people really want on yeah. Yankee Swap. Uh, little Joker Junior, uh, do you have any tips for painting water? Um, you know, again, get a good reference photo or go sit out by a pond, look at it. You got to paint what you see and not what your um, not what your brain thinks you're seeing. Just going with the ultramarine blue on these forget-me-nots. Now, forget-me-nots are actually more of like a cerulean, but I didn't want to introduce a new blue. I wanted to keep this very Americana. That's why I'm using ultramarine blue and crimson and um, yellow ochre because of the very Americana colors. I feel like I might still have. Uh, Sophia Winters, Lindsay, why are you painting an American flag? I am not American. <laughs> well, it's the beginning of today is kind of the kickoff of Memorial Day weekend here in America, which is the big summer kickoff weekend, especially for us here, us here in the east, where it's finally warm and green grass is growing, but it's a big holiday where we celebrate our deceased veterans, parades, fireworks, people have cookouts, swimming, go to camp, and we're American, so yeah. we're painting our flag. Yeah. But you guys don't have to. You can do whatever you want in your painting. Put in, put in your country's flag. Yep. You could alter your colors if, if your country's flag doesn't fit, doesn't match with this. And really, it's about all we need to do to this painting. If you guys have any questions, uh, pop them in real quick and we will answer them. But Rich says hi. He popped in late. Oh, hi, Rich. <laughs> Tell uh, Rich, we might do a live Ask a Crafter next week. We'll have to do it later. So if oh. we end up doing a live broadcast, it will be probably like Saturday night. Yeah, I think it would definitely be Saturday night because Friday, we I will just have taught, but I, I'm not allowed to. Well, you know, I could probably sneak peeks in people's booths, but because um, they're setting up. By the way, when, we, when I do my class, I start in the, and I'm in the middle of a huge, like, looks like an airplane hangar. By the time I'm done, there are like 50 booths all set up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's crazy how fast it goes up. Um, but then, but they also drape their booths so nobody can see what they have yet. Um, so probably be Saturday night if I do a live, uh, ask a crafter just because we won't have anything to haul or show Friday night. Oh, we'll usually go to Michael's, but. <laughs> well, we did that when we went though. We went Friday. To Michael's Friday? Yeah. Cause we had time, but cause we had time before the class started. Oh, because we did the Friday night class. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. If you guys can get tickets to that, that's a fun class yeah. to do because it includes your ticket price. I'm not teaching there, but that is a fun class to do. It's a very, it's, you know, you only have half an hour for each project. You, you get four, to do four projects. It's kind of fun. I liked it because I like to work fast. Some people don't. And I feel like I need a little bit of something on the lip of this bucket because it's a little too bright. Uh, Rochelle Don Paul, have you ever been to Sri Lanka? No, I haven't. I've only the only place out of this country I've been is Canada. That doesn't count. I know it's pretty. It's it's very similar. It's a uh, accent in America. <laughs> I'll say that we're gonna get angry people. They know I don't mean it. I'm just teasing. Somebody told me I was nice enough to be a Canadian. You oh are nice enough to be a Canadian. <laughs> hey, uh, my, my friend Jesse is Canadian, so actually he still has dual citizenship. He's one of the few people, like his generation was the last week, he still get dual citizenship. Yep. So he has a Canadian passport and an American passport. Mm -hmm. But we make fun of him for being Canadian sometimes. <laughs> He's good natured. He takes a ribbing. Well, Canadians are very good natured. That's right. Well, I don't want to generalize a nationality, but all the Canadians I've met have been very, very nice people. Maybe um, not the ones that come shopping with 100 coupons, but... <laughs> yeah, but do you know how high their prices are? I don't blame them. Although, we could go to Canada. We should go to Canada and get our prescription drugs. They get their drugs yeah, way cheaper. Yeah, we should. Um, I've mixed the Payne's Gray and the Sap Green just to do a few accent lines on some of my geranium leaves, which are just kind of like, just these... They're almost like lily pads that kind of cup. Uh, well, actually, I can show you here. I have a geranium. This is what I've been kind of looking at. 
here. I don't know. Gosh, I'm too close, but maybe you can see the. they're just kind of like these cupped leaves like that. Um, I probably just dumped dirt on my painting. Oh, no, I didn't. Wow, that's good. I don't have dirt on my painting. Um, so I'm just kind of putting in some accented squiggly lines like that. And if you want, you could throw in... If you have a, a leaf that's very pronounced that you can see really well, you can throw in some uh, veins. They all they radiate out from the center like a lily pad. But don't overdo it. This is a loose painting. It's totally fine to keep it loose. And I do feel like I'm going to take that same dark. It was the Payne's Gray and the Sap Green because that's that green is opposite of the red. And that's going to give me a super dark because I feel like I still need um, some kind of velvety blacks in the uh, geraniums because the, the shadows are very velvety. They're like a velvety black. So, uh, 1991 Shuby. When do you realize that the painting is done? I've had to shout at myself to stop already. <laughs> um, usually, I know the painting's done when I go a little too far, and I say, oh, yeah, that painting was done about three minutes ago. So, yeah, I have a hard time with that. I, the best advice I can give you um, is to take a break before you, when you're not sure. If you're like, hmm, I don't know if I want to add this extra thing or not. Um, go have a cup of tea. Go take a walk. Um, leave it alone for a bit, come back, and then you'll be able to tell whether it needs it or not. You can, you need a little space. I don't know why, it's just, you just need that time to process it. I feel like I want a little, um, I do want a little shadow there. I used burnt sienna the last time, but I'm not using burnt sienna this time because I haven't added it to my painting yet. So I think I'm going to take a little bit of red and green, make myself a brown, a little yellow ochre in that, and we can approximate... A burnt sienna color that we can use something in the ballpark and we'll go in and this is an ebony splendor brush by the way in case you were wondering when I mentioned that um, they're good quality synthetic short handled well you can get them short handled or long handled I recommend short handled for watercolor I believe they're they would be suitable for acrylics too and oh I want the little I want a little rivet on the handle there not a big deal but I thought that would be good to have since and we can accent the seam on that as well any other last questions uh abigail james have you tried koi watercolors uh yeah i've tried the pans and they're really nice they're um similar to like the prima they're a student grade um they're similar to the lucas they are kind of opaque but they're very pigmented they're um they're great for travel, great for crafting, like rubber stamping and whatnot. And um, yeah, they're good at a good price too. They're pretty cheap. All right. And I would just, oh. apparently a few Canadians, I wasn't offending anybody. I was just teasing. I didn't <laughs> want to hurt anybody's feelings. I have a Canadian friend. So don't anybody <laughs> have hurt feelings. I'm just teasing. I love you all. You're great. I love Canadians. All the Canadians I've met have been very nice. We have a lot of Canadian nurses around here. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forget Glenn is Canadian. Oh, she's American now. Oh, did she take she the... Did. She did. She Well, and my good friend Kat, who... She was Canadian for years and years, and she became an American citizen. I actually went to her citizenship yep, well, swearing yep. in. So yep. don't be offended, Canadians. We she love the Canadians. anything by it. <laughs> I want to thank everyone who showed up and painted with us live today. Oh, let's let's compare. Compare yes, the beginning compare, to the other compare. one. Let's see. This is the one we just did. The The red is still drying, so it'll be a little bit lighter when it's dry. And there's our original. I had the bucket a little on the dark side in the original. Um, but I also used thinner masking fluid here. Used thicker masking fluid here. Um, just because I was using the end of a paintbrush to dab it on on this one. And then... Um, I used the bristles of a paintbrush to dab it on here, but um, let us know which one's better. Number one that I did before the tutorial or, or number, number two, two, which isn't dry all the way yet, but there you go. So next week, if we do a live, it'll probably be Saturday night. It'll probably be very impromptu. So just check in <laughs> and you might get lucky, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> oh boy.
boy. I want to thank the fine folks at jerrysautorama.com for sponsoring this live stream today. Please look at the video description if you're curious about any of the supplies I used. You can find them at Jerry's for the lowest possible price. And um, we will see you for another live painting tutorial in two weeks and maybe an impromptu live next week. I say do it. It'll be fun. It would be fun. It would be fun. The three of you ladies together, how could it not be fun? That's true. That's true. We're a riot, I tell you. Uh, we have two <laughs> votes for number two. Number two. Okay, yeah. cool. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. And um, until next time, happy crafting.